Hey guys, Meteor Bubble, Chris Tomer here, back for another season. Really excited about this. Uh, I just really appreciate everybody that uh, has tuned in here to watch these forecast updates. Last season was, I think, a success, and I'll continue to do them again this winter. I'll, I'll add some new stuff in. We'll build some new stuff into these, but really looking forward to it. It should be uh, just a lot of fun, a lot of fun moving forward. So let's just jump into this. Here's what I'm seeing as far as this winter goes. Before we get into the winter, I think we're looking at an abnormally warm, dry fall for the Intermountain West. Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, New Mexico, warmer and drier than normal. The exception to that is probably the West Coast, Pacific Northwest, um, where I think we could see sort of a trough settle in in November. Um, we might see some early action, in other words, play into parts of Northern California, Washington, Oregon, BC. We'll have to see if that happens, but I think everybody else in the interior stays warm and dry. When you look at this winter overall, we're in a La Nina watch officially right now, and everything that I can see is going to push us into a La Nina. And I'm going to qualify that in a minute. I don't think it's going to be a strong La Nina. I think it's probably going to be a La Nina light, and I'll explain what that means in a second. You know, last winter, it was an El Nino. That favored the southern tier of states. Now we're going to flip that, and it's really going to favor the northern tier of states, the Pacific Northwest, Pacific Northwest, uh, BC. Um, so I'll explain all those areas that are included within that. Some other details. So really drilling down with this. In the key region, in the zone near the equator in the South Pacific, where we measure, where the temperatures are measured, the water temps, I think we're going to run anomalies of probably minus 0.5 to about 1.0, minus 1.0 Celsius. So that puts us in what we call a weaker La Nina phase, or I like to call, and I've called it in updates in the past, a La Nina light. So that will also play into the winter season. A few other things I'm noticing. With these type of setups, it, the orientation of the jet stream, and that's ultimately what we're talking about here, where will the jet stream be running most of the winter? And with the type of orientation that I think we're going to see, it just lends itself naturally to seeing more of these northwest flow setups, and those can really crank out some big snowfall over parts of the, uh, parts of the west. Um, you tend to see that in the Tetons a lot. Um, you can see that in northwest Colorado, western to northwest Colorado. Um, you can see that in the Wasatch. There are some places that really benefit from this. And you typically would see a La Nina winter in those areas be colder than an El Nino winter. El Nino, there's so much involvement with the southern jet stream, the warmer jet, that it tends to flush the atmosphere over the west with warmer air. Now, it's not always the case, but in La Nina winter, the polar jet is the dominant player and it can drag in colder air. And that's key because when you try to figure out how much snow you're going to forecast and what particular area is going to get the most, you got to know the temperature of the air, not only here, but up through the atmosphere. And you got to know the wind, the wind direction. Both of those are key. And you tend to see those line up and align very nicely in and sometimes in these La Nina setups in those favored zones. So that's what I'm seeing right now. Okay, so what's a La Nina? From the graphical perspective, 30,000 foot view, it's that colder water, that blue area that I've drawn, South Pacific over the equator. That tends to set up the jet in a very particular way. You can see the northern branch tends to run right down across the northern tier, and that's where we tend to see the most consistent precipitation in those areas. Let's look at some numbers. This is called the multivariate uh, INSO index. This tends to look at more than just water temperatures. So you can see where we've been. The red areas over the course of the years have been El Nino episodes. Blue is La Nina. So everything tends to oscillate over time. Last winter, we were in the red. That's an El Nino. Um, the blue, we had that triple dip Three winters in a row with La Nina. And then we went up last winter to El Nino, and now we're starting to come back down. Again, technically, uh, we're in La Nina watch, but all expectations and all the trends take us down, and modeling take us down into La Nina. Historical perspective, you can see the, two, the 2024 line. Now we're starting to cruise down with colder than normal water in the South Pacific in that key zone. And with everything that uh, the multivariate is, is taking into account, it slides us down into a historical zone with prior La Nina years of 2022, 2011, 2008, 1999. And so we're going to be in that neighborhood in those neighboring years um, for this upcoming winter. 
December, January, February, and March. And there's agreement there from the European model. Yeah, you can see it cools those waters down to between minus 0.5 and minus 1.0 Celsius. So it's right in that zone that I was talking about. So the Europeans on board. What about the uh, North American multi-model ensemble, which takes, takes into account a lot of different inputs? Well, it's very similar. Now, this is, this is showing you water temp anomalies during the key time frame, December, January, February. And right along the equator, South Pacific, the blue is colder than normal water. So it's in agreement and it actually pushes things down to a pretty solid minus 1.0. So it's kind of on the stronger side. And so is the climate forecast system, um, the spinoff of the GFS, the American uh, production here. And you can kind of see it's there. It's producing the colder than normal water, forecasting that um, all the way through the winter at about minus one. Let's get into the forecast aspect of this. Um, so here's my forecast storm track. You can see the jet, the polar branch dominating. It's not every day, it's not every week, but overall, I think when you were to, if you were to average this upcoming winter, the northern branch would be king. And the area in green, the shaded green, that's where I think we're going to see the most snowfall and the most consistent snowfall over time. And I'm going to zoom in on this map, but you get the idea. Um, that favors the Pacific Northwest, British Columbia. Banff is just outside of that envelope. Western Montana is in, Western Wyoming is in, North Northwest Colorado is just barely in that. I do have this covering North extreme Northern Utah. I do have it covering Salt Lake and the Wasatch. But as soon as you get out of the Wasatch, you're out of it. It's a pretty sharp cutoff. I have it covering the High Uintas. I have it covering Idaho, Mount Shasta, Northern, Northern California, Oregon, Washington, all included. I don't have anything special indicated at this point for the Northeast, um, just normal at this point. Now that could change. Maybe we see a pattern that starts to um, trend and favor through the next couple of months and maybe that changes, but right now I don't have anything big. So let me zoom in. Now you can see where the green comes down. I have it shading Salt Lake. I have it shading Snow Basin, Alta, Snowbird, Park City, Deer Valley, Solitude, Brighton, so the Wasatch included. Um, where you're going to see above normal snowfall. Right on the line, though, um, in some places. Hyuenas. Northwest Colorado. I have it covering Steamboat. I have it covering Vail, and then it cuts off. It might brush Aspen Snowmass, but it does not brush Crested Butte. You're out of it at that point. Um, so it kind of takes a dip down towards I-70. I think the Gore Range is included. It does not include Cameron Pass, so you can you get the idea. Um, Western Wyoming, the Tetons definitely in it. It's going to be, a, should be a really good winter there. Idaho's in it. Schweitzer, Sun Valley, Brundage. Western uh, Montana's in it from Big Sky to Discovery. Bridger Bowl, Whitefish. Um, you know, all the Pacific Northwest. Shasta's in it. And again, uh, as far as BC goes, Revelstoke, Marmot Basin, um, Red Mountain, the Powder Highway, all included. But Banff is just outside of that envelope. I, I still think you're going to see a pretty normal winter, though, in the Banff area. Let me get even more specific. Forecasting with the different colored balls here, I think is it makes it uh, pretty obvious. Green balls are above normal snowfall for the winter. Um, again, Pacific Northwest, Revelstoke down to Schweitzer, Whitefish, Discovery, Big Sky, Jackson Hole, Grand Targhee, Sun Valley, all the way down to Alta, Snowbird, Brighton, Solitude, Deer Valley, Park City. Vales there, Aspen's right on the cusp, green, yellow, um, steamboats there. I'll zoom in on Colorado in a second. Now, let's talk the Sierra. Shasta, I think, is in the green. I think a normal winter on tap for all of Tahoe. I went slightly below normal for Mammoth. That could change. I want to see how November, especially as we get through October and November, plays out because that could flip. I mean, we could go normal in, 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 in Mammoth if we get a deep enough trough. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, and you can see everybody else. Southern Utah, totally out of it, just normal snow for that area. Let me zoom in to Colorado. Um, so Southern Colorado and Northern New Mexico, Tao Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire, below normal snowfall. Below normal snowfall for the San Grita Cristos of Colorado, Normal Snow Wolf Creek, Silverton, Telluride, Purgatory, Monarch, Normal Snow Crested Butte, Normal and Breck, Keystone, Loveland, A Basin, Winter Park, 
Eldora, normal snowfall. Normal up on Cameron Pass, above normal Vale, normal snow for Copper. Normal to above normal for Aspen Snowmass. So you can see how that plays out. Again, though, with this pattern, that northwest flow, I think we're going to see several of those setups deliver heavy snow, I-70 and north in Colorado with a lot of wind. That's one thing we're going to see. And in Denver proper, normal snow, so about 55 inches of total snow for the winter in Denver with a lot of windy 4-inch snowfall setups. That's typically what we would see. In the northeast, again, I don't have anything significant pulling the weights around in the atmosphere, but normal snow. We'll have to see how the next couple of months play out and maybe fine tune this, but that's what I'm thinking as of um, right now. Okay, final forecast aspect of this. Um, let me get myself off of here so you can see this a little bit better. This is probably the least scientific thing I do in this presentation, but I just want to throw this in. The, the percentages, Im almost impossible to predict this early on, but I had to have a way to stack things. The bottom line is you can see the areas that are favored for the most snow are at the top of the list. 100 to 105, 110, 115, 120. Don't get too focused on those exact percentages because those are, those are going <laughs> to sort of change. But you get the idea of, of where we're going to be. The resorts, the Tetons, the Wasatch, Northwest Colorado, Mon Western Montana, Pacific Northwest, Northern California, uh, parts of BC. Those are the Idaho. Those are the areas that are going to be higher on this overall list. I mean, I recall, remember Alta made that run at a thousand inches a couple of winters ago. I mean, there's no way you could have predicted that months in advance. It just goes to show you how difficult it is. But this just gives you an idea. Uh, of where I think um, the most consistent and heavy snow is going to fall overall this winter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's going to do it, I think, for this. Um, let me end on the, the Western forecast again, and you can kind of pick your favorite resort. You know, when you put a forecast like this together, again, it's really like throwing darts, you know, at a dartboard. With, when you try to forecast months in advance, there's so many different things I mean, there's a dozen different things you can take into account, things we don't even know of. But this is my best guess at this point as to what we're going to see this winter. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning in here for this. Just the start of what's going to be an exciting season. Again, I'll be back for updates. We'll probably do a few more updates between now and when the most consistent snowfall starts to fall this season, just to talk about what lies ahead and maybe make adjustments to this. But it should be a lot of fun, and I will talk to you soon down the road. Take care, guys.